Opposition spokesperson on youth and culture, Lisa Anna, posted an essay on her Facebook page this morning using the classic film The Godfather as a lens through which to view Jamaican society and both her and Vibes Cartel's place in it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to In the Streets. Now I'm going to read to you the essay that Lisa Anna posted on her Facebook page. Please listen carefully. Then I'm going to come back and then we discuss the whole thing. Her place and cartel's place. In Here this. is the essay in full. A friend insists The Godfather is the best movie ever made. I'd seen this movie long ago and wasn't convinced. For me, it was a simple story chronicling the life of a poor Sicilian immigrant, Don Vito Carleone whose only available option was to use favors to protect his fellow immigrants and, incidentally, to build an empire of vast wealth. Eventually, people in established position of power owed him so many favors that he controlled them. Anyone reluctant to bend his will would receive an offer he can't refuse. You watched The Godfather once in a lifetime. I exclaimed, but my friend practically forced me to watch it again, so I did. This time, I saw a completely different movie. All of a sudden, I realized I'm living in a Godfather sequel, Jamaica. Jamaica has become a country of power brokers, leveraging connections to church, leaders, police high command, cabinet ministers, politicians, businessmen, and criminal dance, and not only to obtain illegal light. Citizens quickly learn to latch onto people with status, content to be mere foot soldiers while their leaders are generals. Member of Parliament becoming mother, father, boss lady, and yes, in some instances, godfather. In today's Jamaica, the power to control the mindset of people with low self-esteem and, and economic potential is the currency that has tipped the scale of justice unfairly by bludgeoning many of our people into acquiescence. Vulgarity and vengeance as a way of life. For many of our people, lucrative opportunities are unattainable unless somehow connection to the power brokers can be arranged. Those who can't exercise that power or find the godfather who can often fall through society's cracks. They are called unattached and treated as miscreants, misfits, deviants, or lumpen. They are statistic to be rounded up, segregated, preventively detained, or socially crucified. It started me thinking of the Vibes Cartel issue all over again and the predicament into which my country's decency has been plunged. Vibes Cartel has built an empire out of the same type of currency as did Dan Vito. He is the godfather to the Gaza Empire, one built on musical talent, fear, violence and vulgarity. Gaza loyalists threaten death to anyone who dares contradict their godfather's authenticity, relevance, or authority. This is not a new culture. It is developed over generations. Many years ago, when asked what I was going to do after Miss World, I told a dear friend in South Africa that I wanted to be a politician. His response was swift and ash. Lisa, always remember, it is easier to buy a politician than to become one. Decades later, Kibaki Pyramid reminds me, in your face, they must smile up. Behind your back, our money, they must pile up. Well done, Mr. Politician. People like me are considered thieves, bribe takers, rule makers and breakers, and abuse of power for self-interest. Jamaican politics is considered nasty, brutish, corrupt, and sinister by most 
at a time when 53% of our population are under 30 years old. They have demoted established positions of authority and elevated their own alternate system of governance. When I listen to the media reports of his trial, which include weaknesses in the police investigation and the possibility of jury tampering, Vibes might well succeed in overturning his conviction and appeal. This doesn't alter my previously expressed opinion regarding how most recent releases may have indicated a glorification of criminality by way of corruption of the prison system. I stand by these views. Equally, this does not affect the reality reviewed above. The truth is, the politician and the godfather is seen as a part of the same culture of hypocrisy and self-promotion. Therefore, in the minds of the 53%, I don't have the credibility to speak about issues relating to a self-made godfather like Adija Palmer. And for the rest, Mr. Palmer doesn't have any moral authority to criticize me. He thinks that I'm the boss lady, and for Gaza, he's their world boss. We are members of the same generation, but leaders of disparate factions in a dysfunctional society. We have an obligation to Jamaica's future to stop talking at each other and see what we can do together to bring parity and opportunity to all our supporters while returning national discourse to standards of decency and morality. For my part, I'm particularly willing to meet with Adija Palmer wherever he may be residing at the time. If I did, I would make him an offer he can't refuse. I'd like to say, Mr. Palmer, I believe Jamaica needs both of us to use our parallel influence for good. Whether or not you're acquitted on appeal, I urge you to use your epic talent and absolute control over your vast empire to create and encourage progressive minds devoid of anti-social behavior and vengeance. Please ensure your efforts from today forward are geared towards building self-esteem which leads to bridges of unity and national purpose. In return, my commitment to you will be to reach across the social cracks through which many of our people now disappear and ensure that I honor my obligation to be an agent of change so that none of our people will ever again feel the need to serve godfathers of any kind. The urgent purpose of my generation must be to repair the social decay and divide caused by decades of neglect by some people in my position. It will require a shift in focus to education, discipline, persistence, and patriotism. It is time to press the reset button over all the Jamaican psyche and rebuild the nation until we are action to benefit all Jamaicans' human capital rather than high-profile position, is the fuel that defines real power. This is why, after my first 10 years in politics, I'm proud that I can say to my good friend, 20-odd years after who warned me in South Africa about politics, we all can't be bought. My approach to politics has always been and will always be based on patriotism, bolstered by research, analysts, clear thought and a stubborn refusal to obfuscate. I have always spoken to the plain truth. I always will. I have never been, nor will I ever be a cheerleader for gamesmanship or a groupie for anyone or anything. My support must be earned on the basis of merit, not personality. Yes, there are things in Jamaican politics that disturb me. The patronage, the, pretty, the petty tribalism, the narcissism, the greed, the godfather mentality. I'll change them if I could. And I'll continue to work towards a system of Jamaican politics that either eliminates these evils or punish them swiftly and surely wherever they rear their ugly head. In the movie, the godfather speaks finally to his son Michael extolling his virtue and laments his disappointment in failing him. 
I never wanted this for you. I worked my whole life and never apologized for taking care of my family. And I refuse to be a fool dancing on a string held by all those big shots. I don't apologize. That's my life. But I thought that when it was your turn, you would be the one to hold the strings as Senator Corleone, Governor Corleone, something. No matter where we come from or what we do, all of us want the same thing, the best for our children. But the time is running out. We must take the tough decisions. As a leader, I want to use my position to negotiate the best opportunities for our nation's people. I'm prepared to sit with, listen to, and understand the differences between us and the gaps in opportunity that are holding us back. Mr. Palmer, if we all commit to that idea and get it right, it is possible that your son could become Prime Minister of Jamaica one day, and mine an international dancehall artist. There ends the essay that was written by the, the magnitude and the power of Vibes Cartel, its ability to reach millions of people right across the world, and that is a great thing. Also, ladies and gentlemen, Vibes Cartel speaks the truth. Vibes Cartel DJs what he sees. He's not a blind man to just go around DJ and making up things that don't happen. These are heavy day life experience of the superstar. She's reaching out to Vibes Cartel. That is a great thing. I would only hope that justice prevail when Vibes Cartel goes in front of the court for his retrial. The X6 factor is brought into play. And other cases that did not have, um, that have much more proof than the Vibes Cartel case. And these cases were acquitted based on lack of evidence, etc., etc. So this is a victory for Gaza. It is a victory because Lisa Anna has finally come out and understand the power of Dansa. Dance all did not create these problems that uh, came up within our society, the wanton murder, the killing of our people. Dance all did not create that. Dance all only reported on the wanton killing and the abuse and the murder of our people. So, Miss Anna, with due respect to you, I love what you say, I understand what you're saying, but it starts with the government first. The government is responsible to the people. And then guess what? The people must understand that they are the real government. Step up to the, pl the plate. If your uh, member of parliament is not dealing with you right, you know the weapon that you have, that power, and that power is your vote. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy. Pleasant day. Thank you.